prepare to be illuminated. Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be going through the Death Guard cards in Horus Heresy Legions. We're going to start by taking a look at their Warlords as usual and then go through the cards from the cheapest to the most expensive and I'll give you my thoughts and ratings on those. Alright, in common with all Legions, the Death Guard come with four Warlords. Uh, I'm going to start with Kaelas Typhon. Now, he's got this handy looking ability, but he's generally considered to be the weakest of the Death Guard Warlords. That is to say, he's the weakest at the high levels of the ladder. Once you reach Mars or Terra, his ability over here, spend 2 energy to heal himself, it struggles to keep up with the amount of damage people can throw out at the top of the ladder when they have most of the high damage cards. On the other hand, on the lower parts of the ladder, so until you reach around 2000 ranking, you'll often face people who are struggling to throw out the maximum possible amount of damage, and Typhon's ability can really frustrate them. I know that I played Typhon until I reached around 1500 or 1800 on the ladder. And so he has his place, but once you reach the top part, he's just outgunned. So let's put Typhon away and take a look at Dirac Rask. Now Dirac's the exact opposite. Conventional wisdom says that he is probably one of the best uh, Death Guard Warlords because he has, in common with the Epic Warlords, 35 health and 2 attack, but he does uniquely come with 2 special abilities. So with Dirac Rask, uh, there's a passive on him, meaning whenever he attacks any vehicle or structure, he will automatically destroy them if, they, if he damages them. So there's a lot of really tricky structures out there which give crazy boosts to people. And vehicles as well are very tend to be high cost, uh, high damage items. And Dirac Ras can just destroy them in one turn instantly and uh, help maintain board control for himself in that way. But that's that ability would be pretty cool on its own. But here's the real kicker. For 2 energy, he can deal 4 damage to any troops who've already taken damage. Usually, if someone's taken damage, most people will die with another 4 damage on top. So he's got this really powerful damage ability. It's just conditional on um, the enemy unit having taken some damage already. It's super valuable. Um, it's why he was so popular. He can just be on the board and smash up everything out there. And so he's a really, really strong warlord to uh, have for your deck. All right. Next up, the Death Guard Primarch, Mortarian the Reaper. Now, Mortarian is actually not that popular in the ladder. It's not that he's bad. You can actually win a lot of games with Mortarian, but his games tend to take a really long time. Games which are 15 minutes long are not uncommon. A fair number of times, games with Mortarians might even stretch as far as 30 minutes. Why is that? Well, if you look at his wisp, uh, uh, well, sorry, if you look at his ability over here, he spends two energy and he can stun an enemy, and that really slows things down. He also has the ability to remove stun and poison from a friendly troop, which has its place. It tends to be used a bit more rarely, but it can be helpful as well. But Mortarian slows down the flow of the game. And that can, in my opinion, be fun to play as, but it means that for going up the ladder, he's not super efficient because in the time it takes you to play one game with Mortarian, you could have played two or three games with a different Warlord. Still, he's really good. Um, he, he gels well with the deck. I'll talk more about that in a moment. And the best thing is Mortarian has the wonderful Whisper. It's very tricky to pull off, I'll talk about that in a moment, but he can turn into Demon Prince Mortarian, who now has 3 attack, and obviously turning into Demon Prince, you heal yourself around 10 points. I think it's 10 points, it's either 8 or 10 points. But then he gains Poisonous, meaning anyone who attacks him will die at the end of their turn. Well, any units, uh, any troops, not, the, not an enemy warlord, but any troops who attack him will die after they attack him. And then on top of that, he can spend 2 energy and heal a whopping 4 damage to himself. So it means anyone who tries attacking him will die, and then he will try to heal back a lot of that damage. That sounds too good to be true almost, and the 
balancing part is this Whisper of Chaos. It starts at 20 cost, which is impossible to play, and it goes down by one whenever a troop gets poisoned, which is a Death Guard unique mechanic. So when you give an enemy unit poison, or frankly even one of your own units poison, it will die at the end of its turn. Now that's the problem, die at the end of its turn. So when, if you uh, do a mass poisoning, any of your own units will die during your turn, well at the end of it. But then all of the enemy's units, yes they've been poisoned, but they'll be able to act one more time and then die at the end of the enemy turn. That's often really tough to handle. Now Mortarion can compensate for that a little bit with, with his ability, so he can uh, give point. If you manage to give poison to a unit with one of your troops or a tactic, then Mortarion can stun that unit and make sure it doesn't do anything in its turn. And that's a handy way in which you can actually use Mortarion to kill off a very powerful unit the enemy dropped. Hopefully you've got a card which will be able to poison that troop and then you uh, activate Mortarion's ability on it and freeze it in place while it dies. Alright, so that's Mortarion. Um, I personally like playing him a lot. I like the long, slow games, but it's a matter of taste. The complete opposite is Nathaniel Garrow. Garrow has recently become really popular at the high end of the Terra ladder. You might wonder why is that? He's got 2 attack and only 30 health. But Garrow has, in common with Dirac Rask, a passive as well as an active ability. His passive ability is what, is what becomes really cool. Every time you put a troop in play, he can act again. So you can attack with him, play a troop, attack with him again, play a troop, attack with him again, play a troop, attack with him again. And so you can potentially set up some crazy combos there. He does only have 30 health, but the death card deck does have a lot of healing in there. And if that's not enough, uh, Garrow can also uh, heal himself for two energy, then play a unit, then heal himself again for another two energy. And that helps give him more stamina than you may think about. There's some very good players who play no almost at, uh, nothing except for Garrow, and he can be a threat at any part of the game's uh, ladder. Alright, so that's our four Warlords. As I said, just to recap, Kalis Typhon is probably the least effective. Durak Rask and uh, Nathaniel Garrow are very good, strong, aggressive uh, Warlords, and Mortarion the Reaper is... Uh, yeah, playable if you just want to stretch out the game. Uh, if you enjoy stretching out the game, you're not in a rush, you like to just watch your enemies slowly suffer, Mortarion's the guy for you. Okay, with that, let's get into the cards. We begin with Melden Squad. It's a one energy defensive card. So it has front line, so uh, enemies are forced to attack it, but it only has one attack. Really, the only Warlord who tends to use Melton Squad tends to be Garrow, because he, Melton Squad fits in perfectly for Garrow's deck, because you can drop Melton Squad and then act with Garrow again. So a typical first turn move, if you're really lucky and you've got two Melton Squads in your hand, is attack with Garrow, play Melton Squad, attack with Garrow again, play Melton Squad. And that means for the first couple of turns, the enemy is going to be uh, having to spend time chewing through these guys, instead of actually applying damage on Garrow. If you're not playing Garrow, sorry, um, these guys are just not that great. There's better ways of spending energy. Blight Grenade. This tends to go into every single Death Guard deck. It's a really fantastic card. It can do two damage to a unit, which often will kill units left on the board. And if it does that, it attacks a random enemy again. Potentially, if you were able to kill 6 enemy units with this and the Warlord, you'd be talking about doing uh, 14 points of damage in one turn with a 2 energy card. That's if That, me that means if there's uh, 6 enemy units which can die if they take 2 damage, and then the final point of 2 damages might bounce onto the enemy Warlord. Of course, it's a random effect. If you, even if there's 6 enemies, you might play it on 1 and the next bounce goes on the Warlord and it ends because nothing dies. Anyhow, so it's a bit of a random card, but it's great because you can use it to reliably kill off a unit with two health left and then have a good chance of damaging other stuff. Great card, good to keep. Alright. Chem Munition. Alright, so let's take a look at this. It costs two energy, it gives a friendly troop plus one attack and plus one health, and gives it poisonous. 
Now the poisonous thing, as I said, um, the mechanic is a bit sort of um, difficult to work with because you might poison an enemy unit but it can still attack you in its next turn before it dies. And a lot of the times units you poison will die while they're attacking you anyway and the poison will not get a chance to take effect. So for that it's a little bit uh, iffy and then the actual buff it gives for 2 energy is just plus 1 attack and plus 1 health. So it sort of means you spend 2 energy to do 1 point of damage more than you normally would which is not a fantastic trade off. So I say you keep Chemunition only if you're playing Mortarion and you're trying to trigger his Whisper because this way you can give a non-poisonous unit poison and uh, help that 20 points uh, of Whisper cost to count down. Alright, so uh, Chemunition include if you're Mortarion, don't include if you're anyone else. Korturk Bikes, this card is great for 2 energy. Let's take a look at that. It costs 2 energy, it does 3 attack, and it has 2 health. Honestly, a 2 energy card doing 3 attack with 2 health is probably worth playing for 2 energy anyway. But the cool thing is, it's a backlash. Deal 2 damage to a random enemy. That means that this card is guaranteed to do 2 damage to your enemy whenever you play it. Well, at some point after you play it, which is great. There's few cards in the game which have a guarantee of damage, and this is one of those. So yes, quarter bites definitely included. Shield up. So as I said, I used to play uh, Kayla's Typhon a lot when I was new in the game, and shield up would really save me a lot back then. Uh, I would find that quite often I'd be facing enemies and they would struggle to deal with a unit which uh, had high health, and then I gave it frontline with this card and healed it up when it took damage. And that went great for a while, until you reach the higher levels of the ladder, where there's so much removal ability and so much high damage ability, that shield up sort of doesn't really uh, carry its weight anymore. So it's, it's a decent card while you're new at the game, and while your ranking is lower, like again, as I said, below around 1500, maybe below 1800. But as you can start facing stronger and stronger opponents, it's uh, it's sort of a very defensive card, which is easy to overmatch. So I'd say pass on this in general, unless you're new at the game. Sorak bikes. These guys are pretty cool. There's not that many units in the game who have the fast ability, meaning they can act as soon as you play them. Uh, these are a critical part of a Garrow deck, because with these guys, Garrow can actually do 6 damage in one turn because you can attack with Garrow to inflict 2 points of damage, then play Sorak Bikes and attack with them and do another 2 points, and then attack with Garrow again for another 2 points of damage. They tend to be used uh, slightly less commonly with the other Death Guard Warlords, but uh, anyone with fast is always worth including, so uh, yeah, think hard. Uh, well, you don't even need to think that hard. This is a pretty common inclusion in Death Guard decks. It's a pretty solid card. Wall of Bodies. Now this one's interesting, and also look at that crazy artwork. Alright, so Wall of Bodies uh, is a troop, it has no attack, so that sucks. It does have 5 health and front line, so uh, the enemy is forced to attack it, but the cool thing is, every time any unit dies, yours or the enemy, uh, this thing gains an extra point of health. So uh, in that way, it can often become a uh, pretty solid barrier. A common trick is to play this right before you play a uh, large area of effect damage card, which is going to kill lots of units, and suddenly Wall of Bodies becomes great defense. It's worth trying out. I don't like it just because uh, it does no damage to whoever's attacking it. Uh, so I tend to rarely include it, but you tend to see you do see Wall of Bodies showing up all over the ladder, including at the top end. So it's not a bad card. I personally find there's better things to include. Speaking of better things, Captain Yujiyoji. So the Death Guard actually have a fair number of bad legendary cards, but this guy is not one of them. He has this cool ability. Well, first of all, let's look at his stats. Three energy, he's got three attack and four health. Those stats are pretty good already for three energy. But look at his special text. Heal two to your warlord when a troop dies. So every time an en a, a troop dies, again on your side or the enemy, you will heal two to your warlord. So you can use Captain Yuji Oge right before you um, 
attack with a troop which is going to die and then you're guaranteed to get some heals. But now here's a cool thing, it all compounds. Let's say if you've got a troop left with one health and maybe he does two damage and then you're attacking an enemy troop who has two health but he does one point of damage. It means that the enemy troop will kill you when you attack but you'll also kill the enemy troop. Now if you drop Captain Yujioge on the board and then do that move you're going to heal 4 points of damage because you get 2 points when one of your troops dies and you get an extra 2 points when it kills the enemy troop. So this guy is pretty cool to have, again if, especially if you can set him up in a combo where you play him and then arrange for a bunch of stuff to die, you can get a lot of heals for yourself. So uh, great card, fantastic, definitely key. Eisenstein. This card is one you rarely see at the higher end of the ladder because this is sort of the opposite of board presence. This takes a troop you have on the board and puts it back into your deck, although it gives it better stats. So you sort of you're giving up board presence today in the hope of a stronger board tomorrow, which is a bit of a um, a bit of a weird trade-off because you might still get overmatched. This does deal with Alpha Legion Special Orders pretty nicely because you can uh, pull a unit back into your hand which removes any Special Orders and it gets stronger when it goes round again. But for 3 energy it's just uh, feels overwhelming in terms of its cost so you don't tend to see Eisenstein getting played that much on the later levels of the ladder once you reach Mars and Terra. So I say pass on this unless you really don't have much else to put into your hand. Executors. These guys are 3 energy with sort of just below average stats for that. Good health at 4 health but they only do 2 damage when they attack. But the trick is you normally don't want to be attacking with executors. These guys are a key part of a Mortarian deck because with Mortarian you will use these guys to poison an enemy and use Mortarian to stun it so that it dies. So um, because of that if you're playing Mortarian include executors. If you're not playing Mortarian if you, well, if you're not playing Mortarian, the poison ability is really sort of tough to work with to help you and their stats are pretty bad for 3 energy, so pass on them unless you're Mortarian. Geldurk Squad. These guys have the same 2-4 stats, but they've got an interesting backlash. Give 0, uh, well, give plus 3 health, that's what it means, to a random friendly troop. That can be really powerful. I don't like Geldurk Squad though because it's very situational. You must be in a position that when they die, you have at least one other unit on the board which will benefit from the extra health. That can sometimes be a little tricky to set up. I Because of that, I tend to not use Geldurk Squad. Although um, whenever I do see someone play it and they've done it right and they've suddenly used this thing dying to buff up another unit massively, I do feel like kicking myself, but every time I include this card, I really struggle to create a good situation to use it. And usually when I do manage to use it and buff up a massive uh, uh, one of my troops, the enemy has some kind of powerful removal ability which just makes it go away. So I don't like Gildurk Squad. Phosphex Bomb. Poison an enemy troop and draw a card. Again, uh, that poison enemy troop doesn't stop it from attacking you next turn unless you're Mortarian and you can stun it. So if you're Mortarian, Phosphex Bomb's really important to have. If you're not Mortarian, uh, you probably don't want this because it's not going to do that much for you. Yes, it's a guaranteed kill on an enemy unit, but that enemy unit will get to attack first. So, ugh, no. Alrighty. Vengeance. This is a solid card. Every Death Guard Warlord can benefit from this. It's a key part of Garrow though. This card is uh, definitely needed in your Garrow deck because it's one of the ways you'll try and deal with uh, strong powerful enemy units because your Warlord gets an attack strength of 5 when you play Vengeance and he takes no return damage. So great card, good one to have in your Death Guard deck. Zagar Squad. This is used in almost every, well forget almost, this is pretty much used in every Death Guard deck. It has a solid ability which triggers if you play it when you have no other troops in play, which is quite common in your, in your turn with 3 energy, and it gains plus 1 to its stats so it becomes 4-4, four, four, and it gains front line, 
So it becomes a really fantastic card. And the cool thing is, because its energy cost is so low, it costs just 3 energy, this works out pretty well even for Garo, because Garo's all about playing lots of units in one turn, and this fits right into that. Great card, include this in every one of your Death Guard decks. The Blessing of Nurgle. Give your Astartes troops extra health and poisonous. So uh, this is not a bad card, but it's very conditional. You can only really use this if you already have Space Marines on the board. And I don't tend to like that type of, con that type of uh, conditional card because there's too many times when uh, either you don't have that many Space Marines or you only have one Marine and spending four energy to buff uh, one unit with a bit of extra health and poisonous is just not worth it. So because of that, I think Blessing of Nurgle is not a great one to, introduce, to have in your deck. It's just too hard to set things up where you can reliably use this to full advantage. Command Bunker. This is not a bad card. So it's a structure. It can't attack. It does have frontline though, so it helps to defend your Warlord. But the important thing is when you drop it onto the board, um, any enemy, any of your own units on either side of it gain plus one to, uh, attack and health permanently. So, uh, great card to play for that, uh, for that effect. So if you're playing a troop heavy build, this is a good one to include because it's going to help your troops become stronger and tougher. And at the same time, it helps to protect your troops because this has front line and the enemy has to try to take it out first. So this is a good card. Death Cloud. Poison all troops in play. So, um, as a result, this is basically a Mortarian card, right? Mortarian wants to poison lots of troops in order to uh, lower his uh, Whisper's cost. So, um, it definitely include this if you're a Mortarian, but if you're not Mortarian, poisoning all troops in play is usually not desirable because you'll be poisoning your own troops and not getting that much in return. So, definitely include if you're Mortarian, do not include if you're not. Defensive Maneuver. Okay, now this is probably the worst legendary card in the game. It costs 4 energy and it helps you draw a card for each enemy unit. But, the problem is, if you play it early in the game, the odds are there's only one enemy unit, so you're spending uh, well, one enemy troop on the board. So you're spending four energy to draw two cards, which is not a great trade-off, and will lead to you falling behind on the curve of um, the energy curve, meaning that in your second turn, third turn, you would have played this card and just gained one or two cards in your hand and no board presence, while your enemy is probably filling up the board with stuff. So defensive maneuvers is ugly, it's bad, don't include this card, way better things out there. Motor Squad. So Death Guard get two types of uh, sort of heavy troops at four energy. These guys are the first, so their stats are pretty poor, they've got nice health but really low attack, but their special is they gain a mark of chaos when you play them. The problem is th that's uh, very random. Sometimes you're going to get the Mark of Corn, which is the one you really want, and then these guys become devastating and become a 5-5 unit. Sometimes you get the Mark of Slanesh, which is kind of useful because these guys can attack without taking any return damage, but then they're only doing 2 points of damage. Sometimes you get the Mark of Nurgle, which means they do poison, which you'll be happy about if you're um, Artarian and sort of grumpy about if you're anyone else. Sometimes they've got the Mark of Disease, which makes them go invisible and gives them unstoppable. It's random, so you just don't know what you're getting and so you can't really plan for it. I don't l like to include these guys as a result, so we're going to pass over these and look at the much better alternative, which is Fordal Squad. These guys have the same cost. They have the same health. They do one point more damage, which is much more handy at this cost. But they also have unstoppable, meaning that enemy frontline units can be ignored and they can hit uh, either the enemy warlord directly or softer enemy units, which are trying to hide behind the front line. So this is a much better bet for four energy um, if you're trying to get a death guard troop in at that, price, at that point. The third death guard troop at four energy is the plague marine. 
So the Plague Marine also has only two attack, but he does have a whopping six health and then his uh, relentless ability. So at the beginning of every turn, he heals up fully. So that's cool. Uh, it also means that if you manage to buff him, like with chem munitions or anything else, he becomes much, much more dangerous. So it can be good, but the problem is if you don't get a chance to play your buffs, you've got this unit which will stick around forever, but then lightly scratch the enemy with this mere two points of damage. So I say that this is... It's not that super great. Uh, it, early in the ladder, it's fantastic. Again, when you face people who don't have that much removal or who struggle to apply damage, a unit with six health, which is constantly regenerating, will be their worst nightmare. But again, as you reach Mars and you reach Terra in the ladder, so talking about being around 2000 to 2500 on the ranking, Plague Marines get outmatched for four energy. There's better things that people can play. Captain Holgard. This is a Death Guard Legendary card. It's not that great. It's got a decent attack for 5 energy, but at only 4, four health, it dies much too easily. And its rally ability is sort of so-so. The Death Guard already have lots of units with front line, and a, f a lot of poison poisoning already. It's just not that super, so we're gonna pass on Captain Holgard. Favorite of Nurgle is pretty cool. So now, unlike uh, Nurgle's Blessings, this doesn't just give increased health, and by the way, it gives uh, plus four health. It also gives extra damage, and on top of that, a Mark of Chaos. So, this card is a bit better because you're not really conditional on trying to maximize like the n number of Space Marines you have before you play it or anything like that. You know exactly what you're getting. You're gonna spend five energy in the game, and you're gonna buff an existing troop on your board and make it pretty damn strong. So I like this. If you're trying to get a buff uh, for your units into your deck, favor of Nurgle is, well, my favorite. First wave. This is very common in many um, Death Guard decks. Mortarian, Durak Ras, sometimes even Garrow, and also Typhon. So it costs five energy and it puts three Melden squads in play. Now you might sit there wondering, but hey, Melden squads cost one energy. Why would you spend five energy to play to put three of them in play? Well, first of all, you can't have three Melden squads in your hand. But secondly, putting three, uh, so you can't have three Melden squads in your deck. But secondly, putting three units with front line onto the board will often mess up your enemy's tempo, especially if they're being very aggressive, and it just buys you time. So uh, it's good for that. So first wave, good to include. Definitely do that. It's a really solid Death Guard card. Next up is Gorslit Squad. So uh, these guys have pretty okay stats for five energy. They've got great health for five energy, slightly subpar damage for five energy. And at first glance, their energy ability looks pretty cool. Spend five energy and deal eight damage to a vehicle. The problem with this is, uh, first of all, it only damages enemy vehicles. So if your enemy has no vehicles or uh, well, if the enemy doesn't have vehicles, then their special ability is doing nothing at all. But secondly, uh, Death Guard came out early in the game, right? They're one of the first legions. And later legions sort of have this power creep where some of their abilities get better. So like, for example, the Iron Hands get a six energy card, which is the Rapier Laser. And with the Rapier Laser, you spend four energy and you deal eight damage to any enemy troops of your choice, not just vehicles. So this is sort of a bit inferior in that respect. Five energy is also a lot to spend in order to do a bit of damage. So I say pass on these guys. Oscar squad. So these guys are a bit better. So they've got solid stats for five energy, five attack and five health. And when you rally them, so when you put them in play, you get to poison an enemy unit. Again, this is a key part for Mortarian in particular. If you're not playing Mortarian, that poison ability is probably not up your street, and you may want to look at something else for 5 energy. Okay, next up, Purity of Will. 
This is uh, one of the first of the healing cards we're going to see for the death card. Well, I guess we already saw Captain Utioge, but uh, this is one of the cards which heals on its own when you play it. So you immediately heal two and remove poison from your units. This is um, extra important for Mortarion. Often what you can you do is play a, um, a death cloud so that basically poisons all your units and then follow that up with purity of will to remove that poison and then your units are not gone at the end of your turn and they're ready to beat on the enemy in, the, in, the, in the, your next turn. But apart from that, even if you don't have Mortarion, Purity of Will is sometimes worth including just to have um, some extra healing in your deck and its stats are not terrible. At 6 health it sticks around usually for at least 1 or 2 turns and that 3 points of damage it does is respectable. So, uh, pretty good card. Alright, coming up next, the Reaping. This is a tactic I have never seen used in this game. It removes front line from all enemy troops and it gives them a uh, lower attack this turn, which makes it easy for you attack to attack them. Honestly, 5 energy, the Death Guard have better things to do. The Reaping should not be included. On the other hand, Endurance. This is important again in every single death guard deck it heals three to all of your units including your uh, war uh, your uh, warlord but then it also dam inflicts three damage to enemies at a cost of six energy that's actually really good and as i said before it can combo really well with some others like with um captain yujiot because in your turn where you've got nine energy your eighth turn of the game you can play Captain Yujioge and then play Endurance and hopefully kill a bunch of stuff on the enemy team and then watch yourself get healed. So the enemy is left weaker and seeing you get stronger. So uh, Endurance, definitely a great card. Keep both copies in your deck. Gisalt Terminators. These guys are pretty strong. They're now one, you're, you're now getting into some of the high-end tanky units of the Death Guard. And so what you have here is 5 attack, which is pretty strong in its own right, married up with a whopping 8 health. And if you play them when you've got no other troops in play, uh, they get front lines. The enemy is forced to attack them and with 8 health he has, the enemy has to attack them for a while before they can reach your warlord. That's helpful for uh, many warlords, so um, it's a solid one to include in your deck. Related to them is Gerterfall Terminators. So these guys have almost the same health, but they have much more attack. They've got seven attack instead of five, but they lose the front line. So these guys are not really defensive. They're more offensive. So uh, their stats are pretty cool. You tend to not see them that often though, because at six energy, most death, most death, most death guard decks are sort of filled up with endurance rather than uh, these Terminators as well as some of the other neutral cards which tend to balance in there. So this is a decent card, it just struggles a bit for inclusion compared to some of the others. Plague Elite. I used to like these guys a lot when I was uh, rising up the ladder because just like Plague Marines, they've got that heal fully ability, but now they also have poison, meaning whenever they attack an enemy unit, that unit will die eventually. So but on the other hand, on the ladder, you, at the high end of the ladder, you tend to not see that many of these because six, six energy points is a, a very competing, uh, I guess, uh, is a very competing spot in your deck. And there can be better ways of spending six energy than Plague Elite because their main problem is three. They can only do three points of damage, which is weak compared to many other things which are coming out at, three, at uh, six energy. All right, next up, Ignatius Grolger. So there's been a bit of a debate about whether this is a good card or not, but I think the I think some people make a really solid point here. Ignatius Grolger is basically a way in which you can spend seven points of energy and end up with uh, twelve points of troops on the board. How does that work? Well, you spend 7 energy to put Ignatius Grilger into play. As soon as you've done that, you get a free Meldon squad. 
So uh, you've now got seven uh, the seven energy dude plus you've got uh, a Melden squad for an extra one, which costs usually costs an extra one energy. And when Grogor dies, you get a spa you get a pl plague marine put in there, which normally costs four energy. So it means you spent seven energy and you ended up with twelve energy worth of troops, which is not bad. And uh, he basically adds a little bit of defense and a little bit of offense when you play him because you get the uh, uh, Melton squad for defense and Grogur squad. Grogur's stats are not terrible. His uh, stats also really help um, Durak Rask because when Grogur attacks a target, he does four points of damage to it, which will usually reduce most things to four or less health, where Durak Rask can then kill them himself. So it's a pretty good card, um, worth including in your deck. Cargol. So this is a Death Guard Dreadnought. Honestly, it's just super average. Um, include it if you're really struggling to figure out what to put in your deck, but you don't tend to see this at the high levels because there's better ways of spending 7 energy. Such as Spectre of Death. This is a Death Guard direct removal card. So uh, you point at an enemy, that enemy dies, and on top of that you get two Nurglings. Nurglings kind of suck, they've got one attack, three health, but every time they die they go back to your hand. And Nurglings are Durak Rast's best friend, because Nurgling can attack a unit, weaken it, and then Durak Rast's special ability can kill it. So uh, if you're Durak Rast, make sure you have Spectre of Death in your deck, and if you're any other Death Guard Warlord, this plan might make you consider including it because it's coming out at 7 energy at a time when many other warlords are bringing out some pretty powerful units of their own. And the Spectre of Death, you can just kill those instantly. Alright, we're nearly at the end there. Next up is Death Shroud. So this is an amazing card and almost every Death Guard deck will include it. What makes this so good? It just doesn't die. If you have Death Shroud in play and no other troops, then every time Death Shroud dies, either during the enemy turn or your turn, it just goes comes back in again. So it makes it a great card to include. Uh, it's a it is one of the big game winners for the Death Guard. Uh, it's a unique mechanic. No one else really has anything like this, and so really enjoy it. It's a good good one. Uh, make sure it's in your deck. Next up, Halden Tal. Now, I used to not use this guy until recently. Um, he kind of is overshadowed by Death Shroud, but he actually does have a bunch of merits for him. First of all, he has Frontline, meaning when you put him in play, the enemy is going to be forced to try to take him out. And potentially even uh, whatever they do will then get wasted by uh, your, um, what's it called, Death Shroud coming out next. Held and Tal, therefore, I mean, it's okay. I like it. I've been using it a little bit recently. It's not bad. Uh, so, yeah, it's possibly worth including. It's um, that, uh, and that energy ability of it is really great, especially against Raven Guard, where you can start to just really mow down hidden units, uh, regardless of whether or not you can target them directly or not. Mordant. So this is a, a tank. It's one of the early cards from the game and it probably hasn't held up its balance particularly well. Uh, it has shield, meaning it'll take the first hit done to it, but it's coming out late game. The enemy is quite likely to just try and ignore it and focus on killing your warlord instead. So I have not really seen any Mordants getting played, so uh, it's, I'd say pass on this. Just get some uh, buffs or something else to deal with tough units instead. Otherwise you play a Morden and your enemy will ignore it and try to kill you. Alright. Uh, I'll talk about more Tyrant's Resolve in a moment, but if Morden was bad because you can't, the enemy can ignore it, well, give them something the enemy cannot ignore. The Imperial Re Reaper is a Death Guard Baneblade tank. So it basically is a unit with a mere 7 attack, which is pretty bad for 10 health, but a whopping 14 health and front line. Meaning when you put this in place, the enemy's strong units are just going to have to whack themselves into this thing, and then they'll just wear themselves out. Hopefully by the time you play this, the enemy player has used up most of his tough removal cards already. 
Otherwise, you can just he might just spend one card and get rid of this thing. So uh, it can be cool. Some of the top players have started using this a lot and swearing by it. I personally haven't used it yet. I haven't seen it used, but the logic just seems to make sense to me. <laughs> Lastly, Mortarian's Resolve. This is another pretty bad legendary card for the Death Guard. It stuns all your enemies, and then it just heals 5 to your Warlord only, and you draw 3 cards. So it means you spend 10 energy and put nothing on the board yourself, while um, not taking anything off from the enemy's units on the board either. So that's why it kind of just sucks. It's relatively rare to see, and I think you should try and get by without it. Alright, well, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. I'll be making, I think, my Mortarian video next. Fabius Bile will just have to wait probably another week. And with a Mortarian deck, I'll be able to show you the Death Guard in action. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys soon. Bye, everyone.